Today I've got a crawling, sprawling, creeping kind of segment to talk about. We're talking, of course, about climbing plants. Now, over years, we've talked about different things and different places where they can grow on. Just to recap, you can grow them, obviously, on the ground. They will just sprawl on the ground. But we think of putting them on a trellis, on an arbor, or even climbing up a tree. You can grow them through shrubs. Uh, it doesn't matter what they do. In the wild, they're just looking to find the sun. And once they've found the sun, they're in heaven. So rather than produce a woody stem that stays hard and woody, they form a flexible stem that they can climb up and use other things, particularly other plants, to climb up through. Now, for beginners, you typically think of climbers as being like this splendid chap, whether you call it clematis, clematis, or clematis, um, doesn't really matter, we know what they are. They're a little delicate, and some people have a little bit of trouble growing them, uh, but some varieties are much, much easier. So get some good advice on the clematis. Typically, you plant them deep and let them grow up into the sun. Plant them deep and have the roots shielded from the sun so it doesn't dry out and they do very well. Behind me, I've got uh, what is now kind of a rapidly expanding New Dawn Rose. It's one I have at home and literally, it will get about 30, 40 feet across. They don't actually climb. They kind of push their way into things. They're like a rambling rose. They push out on top of things. They don't actually hook or stick or do whatever climbers do. But uh, uh, still, nevertheless, it can be a major upright vertical effect in the garden. Now, this is one for beer lovers. This is a hop plant. And yes, it will actually produce little hops later on. It dies all the way down to the ground. So there's no woody stem or a light, flexible woody stem to climb up from. It starts from the ground, but again, it can be quite a big plant. I love this one. I'm going to switch place. This is a golden form. In fact, I've got this planted in a whiskey barrel they're right down by the street and every year it comes out by itself in the whiskey barrel from nothing all the way up and sprawls around. All right, something that's a very old fashioned, the Victorians love this one. This is a Dutchman's pipe. It's not flowering yet. It produces like a little Sherlock Holmes, uh, I don't know, pipe you call it, as a flower. But uh, very, very nice, soft green leaves. It often will be used to kind of, uh, if you had a porch that was in direct sun, they will put a lattice up and it gives this little warm green glow when the sun comes through it and protects you from it in there. Down below, a kind of climber that does pretty good in the shade. This is a climbing hydrangea. We talked about them before. Now these do actually stick. They're like an ivy. They have little rootlets that stick to a rough cut surface and work their way up. Um, I've had problems growing them on concrete for some reason. Um, sometimes it will take, but sometimes the paints it doesn't like and they don't do so well. Now this little, tiny, innocent looking chap is actually one of the biggest climbers we have. This is actually a Boston Ivy. So it looks kind of innocent and delicate there, but they can have trunks like this and they can cover a whole building. All right, something to be very aware of. It looks innocent when it's small. This is a trumpet vine. Now trumpet vines are a very aggressive growing vine. This one is a particularly interesting one it's called Indian Summer because it flowers much longer than the typical red one or the orange one. It just keeps on going, going, going into September. Very, very nice plant to have. Um, but bear in mind, they will sucker up, they will seed, and you could have trumpet vines basically strangling your garden if you're not too careful. Now, what I want to focus on today is the honeysuckles because we get lots of questions about them. This is the infamous Japanese honeysuckle. Uh, it's an invasive species and it is everywhere in Pennsylvania. I think everywhere in the Northeast. Uh, it's quite attractive when it flowers. It has an aphid that likes it, so the leaves can look a bit discolored midsummer. Uh, its claim to fame is it produces a lovely red berry that the birds love. And that really is the key to why it spreads, because the birds will digest it. The seed goes through their system, and wherever they drop their waste, that little seed drops down, surrounded by nitrogen, and usually amongst another plant. So it will start growing as a tiny little plant, even amongst a large plant, and eventually take over. Always look for the little seedlings. The leaf is very uh, easy to spot. Get them out quickly, because once they root down deep, they're very difficult. It just so happens that about 20 years ago, I planted something from the Midwest, and it said it's tough as nails, will go to zone three, incredibly hardy, and it's got a pretty flower. My worry was it looked just like the Japanese honeysuckle, but apparently it's not quite so bad. So here it is. And this is honey rose honeysuckle, a shrub form of honeysuckle. 
Well, here are a couple of vining or climbing honeysuckles. Uh, they're called honeysuckle because they have this wonderful, sweet fragrance. This one's not bad. This is one of the American native honeysuckles. This is, a, I think it's a Alabama crimson. And of course it has this lovely crimson flower, tubular. So all the uh, insects with long proboscis that can feed on the nectar down at the bottom are good. Hummingbirds love them. This one will keep on flowering all summer long as will this one next door. Now this is my favorite. This is a pericyclamen honeysuckle. It's what reminds me of being a kid in England because it's a very similar fragrance. I do actually just protect them a little bit in the winter. You can't leave them outside. So I usually put them in a, a greenhouse, a garage or something like that. Roll them out early in the spring. It can be in March, it can be frost around and out they come and they will give you uh, a summertime's worth of fragrance and floral enjoyment. So there you go, some of the climbing plants. We touched some old stuff, we looked at some new stuff, and hopefully you might be tempted to put one of these buttes in your garden too. Thanks for joining me, and as ever, if you've got any gardening questions, come down to Greystone Gardens and I'd be happy to answer them.